Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here with our new student guest host, uh, Melissa Trin, and uh, she comes to us with a background in marketing, and then she'll tell us a little bit about what she's doing now, and then we'll go back in time and revisit what she was like as a kid. So, Melissa, what are you up to now? Um, So, currently, I'm back to school. I used to be blue key marketing and content creator, Mm -hmm. but now I'm coming back to school just to finish my degree, still looking for a job for a co-op for next term, Um, kind of... I'm focusing on more on sales right now, but um, that's about it for now. (laughs) Sounds good. So yeah, for those that don't know or haven't visited Melissa's Corner on the YouTube channel, hopefully you take a look at some of the videos, but I thought it'd be good to do a little bit of a a deeper dive and background on you so that folks know a little bit about you. So uh, on that, then uh, what if you were to tell us a little bit about what were you like as a kid? So so tell us about Melissa growing up, some fond memories uh, as you were uh, growing up and getting to the path you are now. So when I was a kid, I... um... I was a different person than I am, like than most people. I, I like to do things, and I, so, I I don't. Um, when I was a kid, I I think I'm very I'm still very outgoing now, but um, back then I was. I I. Yeah, I was just outgoing. I was loved by my friends and things like that. Uh, yeah, and my family, I was born and raised in Vietnam. So the situ- um, so that was something. And then now that I moved to, and then I moved to um, the States for a little bit, and I moved to Canada. So I've been all around. So I, ha- I learned a little bit of every culture. So does bring me to who I am today but yeah um <laughs> still a very outgoing kid and uh was loved for by my friends and everyone else sounds good so it sounds like that you felt uh, a lot of good r- relationships around you uh and you had a bunch of different experiences so uh walk us through a little bit about well so you were born in Vietnam but the journey to, to Canada the, um and, and getting into school and then ultimately um, being a student in marketing and then obviously getting hired by me eventually. But uh, <laughs> what was kind of that, that that journey along the way? And and maybe we'll take a few stops on like the interest in, in, in business and marketing. But uh, h- how did you go from Vietnam um, to, to Canada? So when um, I finished my ninth grade, mm-hmm. my mom at, at that time, I think ninth grade going to 10th grade, that's like a transition from middle school to uh, high school. Okay. Um, my mom saving up money. My mom and dad divorced, so she was a single mom. She saving up money, and she's like, "I'm shipping you to the states." <laughs> okay. uh, Melissa bawling. She's like, "I was like, why are you abandon me? Why do you <laughs> want me to go to the states?" And um, but then I come to sense. Which she, uh, I come to census. I think this is a good thing for me. I talk to people who been to the uh, states. They was consultant. So um, I learned about the state. I went to a little countryside in Oregon, okay. um, very close to Florida. So it's, it's beautiful there. It's, um, I think there's a slight, slightly snowflakes and then the school was off for like three days. Okay. So um, it was really warm here, there too. Uh, I finished my school, my high school, I think I, until 11th grade. Okay. And then I moved to Canada, immigrated in PEI, and finished my high school, 11th grade and 12th grade here. And yes, and then I moved to Toronto. So it's been a long journey. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, yeah, I mean, if we can take a look at some of the, the, the key influences and milestones along the way, because throughout there, obviously, it's a big transition and big move. Um, but what were some of the, the key influences and, and maybe some of the influences that got you ultimately into like a business degree and into marketing? What, what were some of the steps along the way that kind of advanced you to that uh, path? Um, so back then, I want to be a lawyer because okay. I want to protect other people. 
um, I didn't like the competitive environment that uh, you have to win and other lose. I like the win-win environment. So I move on to want to become a politician okay. because that way I can create a win-win solution. But as I volunteer and I start start learning, going to debate clubs and things like that, it's not the case either. <laughs> you have mm -hmm. to have to have that win-lose situations. So um, I've been following around with my mom, job shadowing my mom, and I learned that I really, really like business. Yeah. So um, because that is how I'm creating a win-win situation for both myself and my clients. So that's why I, I say that's it. This is business is, is a thing. Um, I then I choose school. I had Ryzen. I, I had I think I choose Ryzen between Ryzen and U of T. And at that time, I say, you, based on my research, UOT is more competitive, more academic. Mm. Why I want that experience, that culture. Um, so I choose Ryzen instead. So that was how I get here. Um, why I choose marketing? I First, I, I choose my minor as a accountant minor right. because I was pretty good at it. I got 90s like overall on my uh, accounting 101. So I like maybe I can nail this. But then I realized but then when I get to the tax course, I got like a 49.9, like barely. <laughs> so it's round up. So I got ba I was barely past that course. So I say this is not it for me. Um, I get out of it. But because doing in on, my major is entrepreneurships. So I have to take a, um, some of the course aligned, some of the professional related aligned with the marketing minor. Okay. That's why conveniently I was following this minor as well. So that's how. Sounds good. So if, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about uh, what goes in your head when you uh, go to school and, and you take this uh, course and then you get like a 49, because I know I have my story where I basically nearly flunked out in my first year. <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, a kind of a warning letter from um, the school saying like you better get your grades up or else you're going to be out of the program. But did you have a similar experience or something different along the way? No, because most of my course are like A and B. Okay. So that is the only D that I have. So gotcha. it does affect my GPA, but it's not to that point of the school okay. chase after me. But uh, I struggle. I struggle so hard in that course because I couldn't grasp the concept. And I say the concept would change every single year. And if I couldn't keep up with the book right now, I don't think I can keep it up. And sometime, like for marketing right now, work, I, I am, I'm working on marketing for you. And there's things that I can't keep up. There's things that I feel shortcoming, but I still feel energized doing it and learning mm -hmm. about it. I didn't feel energized doing accounting. So right. that's why I say maybe this is something not for, is is not something for me. Yeah, and no disrespect to all the accountants out there because there are some. No, 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 it's just it. not for me. <laughs> exactly. So oftentimes, what you need to do is take a look at your your preferences and your interests, and and especially experience it, right? Because exactly. sometimes that's uh, through uh, like an academic course or through. Um, just what they show on TV or a YouTube video, you get a little bit of it, but uh, to actually go in and do it is, is definitely uh, very helpful. So um, so that kind of brings us to uh, like cl close to present day and uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, I guess, um, some of the, the different, um, I guess, milestones recently. So obviously you started with uh, the, kind of the co-op term and um, you, you tried to grow like the YouTube channel and, and Instagram and stuff like that. What, what are some of the um, kind of, uh, learnings that, that you got from that experience, if you don't mind sharing. Um, the learning I got from it is I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed <laughs> okay. the creativity aspect of it. I really enjoyed the communication strategy, strategies. And then I really enjoy like looking at the data data and, and, and trying to understand what does people want. So that aspect, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the thing, one thing that I, I, I think I'm missing is that, that human interaction, that one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one basis. Um, I know I'm, I have you, I, I was chatting with you every single week, but I, I think I want something more than that. So um, for the next step, I'm looking for a role in sales because mm -hmm. it's very similar to marketing. It's still looking at the data and trying to understand people. 
but now I can have a one-on-one -on -one basis with uh, a person and I can have immediate feedback from them so I can understand them better. That I think that will be something uh, different for me. Yeah. Sounds good. And what is your process to uh, learn about sales? Because or, or do you actually have sales courses in your program? I don't, I don't think there are, are there? They are sales courses. And okay. I just learned out that they actually have a sales and customer service minor okay that i had that i didn't know but um i i have sales course is called um effective persuasion is is a marketing course and then there's right. a entrepreneur sales is an entrepreneur course so i do have some sales course and i am also in the sales leader i can't talk today sale leadership program mm -hmm. um so the sale leadership program is now is recognized that we are one of the um, best English uh, sales program uh, at, at, in Canada. So cool. I'm really excited for that. Uh, I got training. I got a lot of training from the program. I have a mentor um, who is a sales professional who's helped me with all of the strategies and things like that. And then they put me in case um, in sales competition so I can practice my sales skills as well. So I think that will help me um, stand out from other applicants. Sounds good. And uh, obviously, we just kind of glossed over a lot of your history because there, there's a lot of things that happen in the US, in Canada, and all your transition points. But we'll probably save those for future episodes. But if you were to sum up a couple of pieces of swipe, the stuff I wish I knew earlier to uh, young Melissa uh, in kind of various uh, tumultuous times in your in your career and your life, what, what are some of the maybe the top three that, that you might share with yourself? Or, or if you have more or less, then that's fine too. So what are some of the swipe that you would have shared for your younger self? Um, one thing I, I don't, I don't think, I think I don't, I wouldn't change anything that young Melissa have did because that <laughs> what make me today and that what, what make me me today. But, uh, there's one thing that I wish young Melissa would do that is having an open mind and actually mm. enjoy the ride. That's, um, and for any of the, um, uh, any of, of the, the high school university student out there, Sometime when you when you expect a goal, like if I achieve something for me to be happy, um, it's become draining and your your happiness will become really short term. Okay. So for example, when you get you say, um, I when I get to when I get to um, GPA 4.0, I'll be ha happy. You got your GPA 4.0, you're happy and your happiness will be really short. Now you have to right. chase another goal. So instead, enjoy the ride by enjoying the learning process and enjoy um, everything that come along and enjoy the challenges and enjoy the, the ups and downs. So that would make my life, that that would make young Melissa a lot, a lot happier. Right. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the typical uh, the quote where life's about the journey, not the destination. And uh, what, what comes to mind is, is another quote that I love. It's, uh, for, for there is nothing good or bad, and thinks, thinking makes it so, right? Yeah. So whatever you're doing in the moment, whether it's you're achieving your goal, you're failing, or you're doing whatever, it's up to you to, you to make something of it, right? Um, yeah. and, and failing is kind of in, in air quotes in the sense that, well, it, it's not failure. It, the only time it's failure is when you stop. Right? Yeah. And then, then that's the ultimate failure. But if you keep on going and you learn from it and you get better and you grow, well, then that's something that you can do. So having that, that open mind, and that's probably something that I wish that I did more of instead of just kind of holding back and not even trying and not even uh, putting that forward. Um, well, that's definitely a, a good um, good piece of advice for, for yourself, even though you wouldn't change yourself. <laughs> but that's <laughs> something that, that I'm, I'm sure could, could have been helpful for yourself. So uh, are, are there any other words of wisdom that, that you'd want to share with folks? Or what are some of the uh, future aspirations that we can look forward to, to hearing from you? Um, for now, still, if you haven't subscribed to the Focus Inspire channel, focus, <laughs> uh, subscribe, because there's a lot of episodes from Luki and also from myself from the, my corner um, coming out comment on what you want us to talk about um, and check checking on us uh, often because we have a lot going on and we'd love to share our ideas and our aspiration and our um, insight for you. 
for sure. So it looks like that we'll have more content coming up. And uh, yeah, if folks want to connect, uh, you can obviously see, see it on the YouTube channel, but uh, can they connect with you on, on LinkedIn if they're, if they're yeah. interested? Yes, for sure. Um, we will we'll include my LinkedIn in the description. So anyone uh, want to connect, just message me and then we will connect. <laughs> Sounds good. So uh, thanks so much, Melissa, for joining us for this intro episode. And hopefully we'll have you back for a future episode. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.